New studies show how people can anticipate future events, published on October 11, 2010. This was from a uh, report, a uh, social thinker by Melissa Berkeley, PhD. Have scientists discovered evidence for psychic phenomena? In Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass, the White Queen tells Alice that in her land, memory works both ways. Not only can the queen remember things from her past, but she also remembers things that happened the week next. Alice attempts to argue with the queen, stating, I'm sure mine only works one way. I can't remember things before they happen. The queen replies, it's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards. How much better would our lives be if we could live in the white queen's kingdom, where our memory would work backwards and forwards? For instance, in such a world you could take an exam and then study for it afterwards to make sure that you performed well in the past. Well, the good news is that according to a recent series of scientific studies by Daryl Bem, you already live in that world. Dr. Bem, a social psychologist at Cornell University, conducted a series of studies that will soon be published by one of the most prestigious psychology journals, the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. Across nine experiments, Ben examined the idea that our brain has the ability not only to reflect on past experiences, but also anticipate future events. This ability for the brain to see into the future is often referred to as psi phenomenon. Although prior research has been conducted on the psi phenomenon, we have all seen those movie images with people staring at xenophobes with a star or wavy lines on them. Such studies often fail to meet the threshold of scientific investigation. However, Ben's studies are unique in that they represent standard scientific methods and rely on well-established principles in psychology. Essentially, he took effects that are considered valid and reliable in psychology. Studying improves memory. Priming facilitates response time. And simply reversed their chronological order. For example, we all know that rehearsing a set of words makes them easier to recall in the future, but what if their rehearsal occurs after the recall? In one of the studies, college students were given a list of words, and after reading the list, were given a surprise recall test to see how many words they remember. Next, the computer randomly selected some of the words on the list as practice words, and the participants were asked to retype them several times. The results of the study showed that the students were better at recalling words on the surprise recall test than they were later given at random to practice. According to them, practicing the words after the test somehow allowed participants to reach back in time to facilitate recall. In another study, Bem examined whether the well-known priming effect could also be reversed. In a typical priming study, People are shown a photo, and they have to quickly indicate if the photo represents a negative or positive image. If the photo is of a cuddly kitten, you press the positive button. If the photo is of maggots or on rotting meat, you press the negative button. A wealth of research has examined how subliminal priming can speed up your ability to categorize these photos. Subliminal priming occurs when the word is flashed on a screen so quickly that your conscious brain doesn't recognize what you saw, but your non-conscious brain does. So you see just a flash. And if I asked you to tell me what you saw, you wouldn't be able to. But deep down, your non-conscious brain saw the word and processed it. In priming studies, we consistently find that people who are primed with the word consistent with the balance of the photo will categorize it quickly. So if I quickly flash the word happy before a kitten picture, you will click the positive button even quicker. But if I instead flash the word ugly before it, you will take longer to respond. This is because priming you with the word happy gets your mind ready to see happy things. In Bem's retroactive priming study, he simply reversed the time sequence on this effect by flashing the time word after the person categorized the photo. So I show you the kitten picture. You pick whether it's positive or negative. 
Then I ran into a church to fill me with the good or bad word. The results showed that people were quicker at categorizing photos when it was followed by a consistent crime. Not only will you categorize the kitten quicker when it is categorized by a good word, you will also categorize it quicker when it is followed by a good word. It is as if, while participants were categorizing the photo, their brain knew what word was coming next. And this facilitated their decision. These are just two examples of the studies that Ben conducted, but as other studies have shown retroactive effects, the results clearly suggest that average non-psychic people seem to be able to anticipate future events. When questioning the aspirin of how big of a difference was there, does studying for a test after it has occurred or planning you with a word after categorizing the photo make a dramatic change? Or is it just a slight bump in the performance? Essentially, these are questions of effect size. It is true that effect sizes in BEM studies are small, only slightly larger than chance. However, there are several reasons why we shouldn't just disregard these results based on small but highly consistent effect sizes. First, across his studies, BEM did find that certain people demonstrate stronger effects than others, in particular people with high in stimulus seeking an aspect of extroversion where people respond more favorable to novel stimuli showed effect sizes nearly twice the size of the average person. This suggests that some people are more sensitive to psi effects than others. Second, small effect sizes are not that in common in psychology and other sciences. For example, on average, the BEM study showed that an effect size of 0.20 out of a possible 0 to 1, although that is fairly small, it is as large or larger than some well-established effects, including the link between aspirin and heart attack prevention, calcium intake and bone mass, secondhand smoke and lung cancer, condom use and HIV prevention, Bushman and Anderson, 2001. And as Cohen has pointed out, such small effect sizes are most likely to occur in early stages of exploring a topic when scientists are just starting to discover why the effect occurs and when it is most likely to occur. So if we accept that these psi phenomena are real, how then can we explain them without throwing out the entire understanding of time and physics? Well, the truth is that these effects are actually pretty consistent with modern physics' take on time and space. For example, Einstein believed that the mere act of observing something here could affect something there, a phenomenon he called spooky action at a distance. Similarly, modern quantum physics has demonstrated that light particles seem to know what lies ahead of them and will adjust their behavior accordingly, even though the future event hasn't appeared yet. For example, in the classic double-slit experiments, physicists discovered that light particles respond differently when they are observed. But in 1999, researchers pushed this experiment to the limits by asking what if the observation occurred after the light particles were deployed. Surprisingly, they found that the particles acted the same way, as if they knew they were going to be observed in the future, even though it hadn't happened yet. There's a uh, wiki entry on this, and I'm going to put that in the Felicia photo. Such trippy time effects seem to contradict common sense, and trying to make sense of them may give the average person a headache. But physicists have had to accept it, as Dr. Chow, a physicist from Berkeley, once said about quantum mechanics, it is completely counterintuitive and outside our everyday experience, but we, physicists, have kind of gotten used to it. So, although humans perceive time as linear, it does not necessarily mean it is so, and as good scientists, we shouldn't let our preconceived beliefs and biases influence what we study. Even if these preconceived beliefs reflect our basic assumptions about how time and space work, Dr. Ben's work is thought-provoking and, like good cutting-edge science is supposed to do, it offers more questions than answers. If we suspend our belief about time and accept that the brain is capable of reaching into the future, the next question becomes, how does it do this? 
Just because the effects seem supernatural doesn't necessarily mean it is. Many scientific discoveries were once considered outlandish and more suited to science fiction, the Earth being around, microscopic organisms. Future research is greatly needed to restore the exact reasons for these studies' effects. Like many novel explorations in science, Ben's findings may have a profound effect on what we know and have come to accept as true. But for some of you, perhaps these effects are not such a big surprise, because somewhere deep down inside, you already knew.